Hey gentlemen, Dr. Sabrina Soult here. We're gonna have a tough conversation. So many times I get guys in my practice and they have a diagnosis of erectile dysfunction and we kind of come to the point of, okay, you have ED, what now? Well, the first thing that I've learned in clinical practice with this as a situation is that many of you don't actually know what that even means, right? So it's not working down there, but why? And this is such an important question to answer and to be curious about because if we understand the why, we can actually get you long-term healing. We can get full function back without a prescription for the little blue pill every month, without you having to do self-injections. And ultimately, I think that should be every guy's goal, right? Because the reason that this is happening in the first place is the same reason why it's only going to continue to get worse and why you're going to always be dependent on some sort of outside means in order to achieve that erection. So let's talk about it. To get a healthy, strong erection, we need three main ingredients. First one, adequate hormones. Second one, adequate nerve conduction. Third one, adequate blood flow. Now, let's just get out of the way any sort of traumatic injury or any sort of trauma to the area, okay? Let's pretend that that's not a factor here and let's solely focus on the main factor for most gentlemen is that this is usually a result of blood flow disruption to the penis. This is a problem because blood flow just doesn't magically stop, right? We don't just magically get poor blood flow or develop a clot or have any of these issues. These are usually issues that are caused by diet, lifestyle, those types of choices, right? This is why I said this is gonna be a hard conversation. Usually, if a guy has ED, there are a few things, or should I say more than a few things, that are playing into this as far as his diet and lifestyle goes. Usually he's consuming more calories than he should, and usually these calories are either coming from sugar in the diet or processed oils. Both of these are very, very detrimental to your blood flow. They're gonna cause damage to your blood vessels. Third thing, there could be a genetic component. Some men do have a genetic component where uh, they have lack of integrity in the blood vessels or they have a tendency to just have high cholesterol. It's called familial hypercholesterolemia. Um, this is a different scenario. This is something that we can take a little bit of TLC and actually work on. But the other ones, mainly lifestyle, and these need to be adjusted. The other thing, lack of exercise. A lot of men are just foregoing physical activity these days and here's the thing, you gotta be active, you gotta be moving, you gotta keep that blood flowing so you can keep it flowing where you want it to go, okay? I know I said this was gonna be a tough conversation. And the other thing, you really gotta clean up that diet. Uh, we gotta make sure we're eliminating alcohol. Alcohol is so destructive to erectile function. Uh, not only during that moment where you are consuming alcohol, but the long-term damage of what it's doing to those blood vessels a lot of times that's what's occurring in this situation. So cutting out the alcohol, cutting out the sugar, and then the processed seed oils that are occurring in the diet, these are the things that are causing a lot of damage to actual cell walls. Um, so this thing looks like fried foods, cooking with things like canola oil, um, all these things are ubiquitous in uh, fast food and a lot of processed foods. So if that's something that's a major staple of your diet and you're experiencing ED, it has to go. Okay, again, tough conversations. But this is also a good thing because knowing that we can control for a lot of these other variables that are contributing to the ED means that once we get these variables under control, we can actually start healing and reversing the process so that you can get full function back. Now, sometimes we do have to come in and have an experience in the office where we're actually going to be using some sort of regenerative injection therapy because sometimes the damage can occur and can be so severe that even if you do correct for all the variables that we just discussed, there can still be some lasting damage. And using regenerative injection therapies to actually heal that, uh, things like PRP or other stem cell based therapies, uh, we can actually regenerate all that, the blood vessel tissue in the penis so that it can function better for you. Hope this was informative. Look forward to seeing you in my practice.